The GOAT, Michael Jordan. By literally any metric used to evaluate basketball, Jordan clears any other player in NBA history. But as we move further and further away from his actual playing days, fewer and fewer people seem to truly remember his career. While virtually any perceived flaw in his resume is substantially illuminated in a desperate and pathetic attempt to try to nullify his massive advantage against other players. Other players who have played significantly longer in more watered down eras to stack hollow statistics. And one of the biggest alleged weak points, if you want to categorize it as such, of Jordan's career was how he played at nearly the age of 40. I'm a man, I'm 40. As if that is an overwhelming or significant aspect used to evaluate a player's legacy. And with the various memes and gifts and garbage hot takes it's garbage. percolating around various social media platforms from various Gen Z know-nothings. Nerd! 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 Comparing Jordan at the age of 38 to other players, it is time to dig into the context of just what Michael Jordan's first season with the Washington Wizards, his aged 38 season, actually looked like. The year was 2001-2002. The LA Lakers were dominating the league as they would go on ultimately to win their third consecutive championship that summer behind Shaquille O'Neal and Kobe Bryant, who were both all NBA first team selections that season. Along with Bryant, various other elite perimeter players were ascending at that time with Tracy McGrady joining Bryant on the first team that year, while Allen Iverson, who led the league in scoring that season, headlined the All-NBA's second team. But in the middle of it all, Michael Jordan decided to come out of retirement for a third time after a full three-season hiatus from the NBA. But he didn't go join his boy Phil Jackson to build a super team in LA and gravy train a seventh title. In fact, he didn't go build a super team anywhere. Jordan came out of retirement to join the Washington Wizards. What? You know, the Wizards, who had the third worst record in the entire NBA the year before in the 2000-2001 season behind minority owner and president of basketball operations, Michael Jordan, winning just 19 games that year with Richard Hamilton and Juwan Howard leading the team in scoring that season en route to a putrid 19-63 record. But the heinous season did lead to the Wizards landing the top pick in the NBA draft that summer, using it to select the Washington Wizards select Kwame Brown. What? I mean, no one is saying Jordan is the GOAT of front office moves here. You see, Jordan wasn't trying to steal any cheap championships like what became the trendy thing to do in the 2010s. He was just, quite frankly, disgusted with the team he was now an owner of being a bunch of losers. So when he decided to come out of retirement, not only did Jordan not crawl on his hands and knees to another superstar's team, he also didn't grovel and beg for another superstar to come join him on the Wizards. Washington would make no other significant upgrades that offseason except adding the 38-year-old GOAT out of the owner's box after a three-year layoff. Oh, and also they traded away their leading scorer from the year before, Juwan Howard. Jordan would sign a $1 million contract and donate the entirety of it to 9-11 relief efforts. See, it wasn't about stacking any more championships, accumulating any hollow stats, and it wasn't about the money. It was about competition and teaching his assortment of young loser players how to compete and win. And when evaluating the Wizards' 37 and 45 year end record that season, it looks like a pretty unspectacular season. And when viewing Jordan's stat line that year of 23 points per game, six rebounds, and five assists, well, that also doesn't look remarkable through the lens of the inflated scoring and stat stacking that happens in today's offensively incentivized era. But take a closer look. 
Jordan, unsurprisingly at his age, experienced significant issues with his knee throughout the season and ended up playing only 60 of a possible 82 games that year. But in the 60 games he played, the Wizards were 30 and 30. So a team that was only 19 and 63 the year before that traded away their leading scorer played 500 basketball for the three quarters of the year that Jordan actually played. Jordan, meanwhile, at the age of 38, led the Wizards in scoring, assists, and steals while he was third in rebounding on the team that season and taking a closer look at the 22.9 points per game. Uh, yeah, that was actually good for ninth best in the entire NBA that season. An NBA where league-wide scoring per game that year was just 95 and a half points per game. For context, the average scoring this season in the 2022-2023 season was 114.7, nearly 20 points per game more. And the ass Wizards team that year averaged only 92.8 points per game, meaning Jordan accounted for nearly 25% of the Wizards scoring. For context, that is roughly the same amount of total point percentage scored that Jason Tatum and Steph Curry accounted for this year while averaging 30 and 29 points per game. The duo was named to first and second team All-NBA. And while Jordan physically would regress even more the following season, he still became the oldest player in NBA history to average 20 points per game for an entire season. And he did it while playing in all 82 games. Yes, in his aged 39 season, where he turned 40 halfway through the year, Michael Jordan managed to log all 82 games for the ninth time in his career. And in two other seasons, he played in eight and 81 games. Also in this season, where he turned 40 in February, while playing 82 games on one leg, he averaged 37 minutes per game. Load management be damn. <laughs> and Jordan would add six rebounds and five assists per game to go along with his 20 point per game average in an NBA that had nightly averages of just 95.1 points per game. While calling Jordan's Wizards tenure an overwhelming success story or claiming it added to his legacy as the easy slam dunk goat would maybe be a tad bit hyperbolic. But what Jordan achieved on the court during those two years is far from the punchline that many teenagers and liars in the mass media today portray it as. And it certainly doesn't invalidate Jordan's stranglehold on the mantle of GOAT, nor does it make other players' fabricated cases for that title any stronger.